Hi guys and welcome back, my name is James and today we're going to be reviewing a very, very special leather. This is indeed Conseria Walpier's white waxed buttero leather called also bourreau or even ghost leather. It's got an amazing finish and I'm going to try and test it out and tell you guys or at least help you guys understand how this leather reacts and whether or not this is what you're looking for. This is a full grain vegetable tanned leather that has been aniline dyed but that is not the most interesting part of this leather. Now you probably know by now that this leather has been covered in wax and you can either get it with black or white waxed versions and so it really has this amazing particularity of aging in a very distinct way. Indeed the wax will as it ages basically be buffed off or rubbed off in different ways depending on how you're using the piece of leather and reveal the rich colour underneath. Now I went for the ghost white waxed in black or at least the black leather with white wax uh, because I thought it would give us the best contrast here to really showcase the how this leather ages and how this leather wears. It's a medium to strong firmness and I can definitely imagine it being some very nice card holders. It's not the firmest out there definitely but it's still got a great great feel to it, a good firmness and it's probably on par to the natural vegetable tan leather that I'm used to working on a day-to-day -day basis in my shop. The feel to it is silky smooth to the touch. Uh, that's totally to be expected because of the wax finish here and I'm going to be very interested to see how this scratches in my tests. I'd like to thank Rocky Mountain Leather Supply for sending me this white waxed bourreau leather. Rocky Mountain Leather Supply have an amazing selection of leathers and if you're in the leather craft industry or just starting out or at any step of your craft Go and check them out, they have an amazing selection of leathers and colours and the cherry on the icing is that they offer free of charge uh, skiving down to any thickness that you need. In my case it's 1.2 millimetres thick which is going to be hopefully really nice for what I have in mind for this. So go and check them out guys, the link is in the description down below. So today as I mentioned we're going to be testing this out, we'll be waxing it if we can, wetting it if we can, oiling it if we can. Uh, because of course this is a wax finish so presumably that shouldn't do anything but we're still going to test it out. The most interesting test for me is going to see how it scratches and how it ages with time. Of course I'll be building something small as well at the end to showcase this inner build and uh, yeah hopefully it will help you decide whether or not this is a leather that you want to work with and whether or not it's the one that you should be picking up next. So guys let's go to the bench, let's get testing and let's get crafting. The particularity of this leather is this waxed surface which does mean that my first two tests will seem a little stupid where I'll be adding water, oils and waxes onto this to see how it reacts. I expect nothing to happen but I'm going to test them very quickly and show you the results just in case. This is the water test to start off with and interestingly enough the wax did actually absorb some of that water more than I expected actually to be quite frank with that guys I am thoroughly surprised. Hearing that it was a waxed surface I didn't expect it to absorb this much but what I suspect is happening is that this waxy uh, surface is just a bit dry and it's just a top layer of the wax absorbing the water. So I'll let that sit for a couple of minutes, I'm going to wipe off the excess, let it sit and we'll see if that water penetrates the leather and how deeply. Already that is very surprising and I did not expect that. Um, I honestly, as I just said, I expected the water just to go straight off but it didn't, instead it was absorbed. So very interesting to see that. I'm going to let some more water on it actually rest because I want to see if it goes all the way through and if it actually comes out on the underside of the leather. So we'll just let that rest for a few minutes and come back to it. The second test is using Fibing's 100% pure Nitsut oil. Wow, now that is actually very surprising. I'm going to spread it out here to see just how it looks but <laughs> I'm going to say the same thing as I did for the water for some reason because it was a waxed finished surface. I really expected nothing to happen here and that the wax would be protecting that leather completely from the oils but instead no, the oils are being absorbed very nicely into that and it gives us a really interesting dark look and it's actually sort of helped with the patina a bit. Now this leather is going to patina gorgeously because the finish uh, will be coming off with wear and showing the darker leather underneath and it's going to have a very very particular patina uh, over time but this is very interesting because this really does add quite something to it and it does make it very soft. You can certainly feel the oils in your fingers afterwards 
So the oil is not penetrating as it would normal leather, but uh, definitely interesting. I think it's not actually penetrating the leather at all. I think it's actually resting on the surface here and being absorbed by the top finish of this wax, but not actually going anywhere into that leather. But it does give a very, very soft finish to it, which this was soft before, but that is just, 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 it doesn't feel like leather anymore. It's really weird. Anyhow, I'll put some bit more oil on that to see how far it absorbs and uh, we'll come back in a minute. Okay, let that rest and we'll come back in a few minutes to see if it goes all the way through. My final test is going to be with Saphir Pat de Luxe, which is a nice hard wax that is basically very readily available and should give us a nice idea of how this reacts to wax. It's interesting to see how the colour shifts from a very dark grey when the wax initially hits to basically already coming back to very nearly its original colour. That is a very interesting effect and I can just feel the wax on the surface. I'm not actually sure the wax does anything to be honest apart from maybe just add wax to it. I mean this is a heavily waxed surface already so I really don't think there's any point in waxing it but just in case you were curious this is the result. I've now got wax all over my fingers here, due more to the saphir pad de luxe that I've just added than to the actual waxy surface here. And that just, yeah, tells me one thing very simply, that the wax is not being absorbed or going anywhere into this uh, surface, surface finish of this leather. Coming back to the water test, as you can see, the water has pulled on the middle there, um, has been absorbed slightly, but not that much. Um, however, it has gone through. So, yeah, interesting. The waxy surface is definitely not impervious, which means that maybe adding a layer of wax if you want to protect it from water and elements may not might not be a bad idea, but it won't do anything to the actual leather. As you can see, the colors are pretty much identical, but it might help protect it from water as clearly the water has gone through. Can the same be said for the oil? And... Well, mm, no, not really. Oil has not gone through. Uh, maybe if I let it sit longer, it's certainly become more supple in the center part here. So I'm guessing if I leave this longer, the oil eventually will get through, but clearly a bit more resistant uh, to oils than to water. Has left a big stain though. That's the only issue with the oil. So yeah, water doesn't stain for very long. Once it dries out, the, the color seems to come back to what it was, but the oils certainly do leave a stain. And just to give you an overview, this is the original, this is the wax finished, this is the water finish, and this is the oil finish. As you can see, all of these have remained roughly the same color overall. I mean, the waxes really haven't changed anything. The water one has dried out, except for where that water stain was left in there, but uh, basically it would dry out and come back to the same color. Uh, whereas the oil one, as you can see, the oil has permeated that leather a bit more and left it darkened. And my guess is this one would be the one that stays darker for longer. But uh, overall, I have to say, I am very, very surprised with these results. I did not expect this, as I said. And I would say it could be interesting to wax it just to protect your leather surface, as clearly uh, this waxed surface isn't impervious to water and even less oil. For my next trick, I will be bending this piece of leather lengthwise and seeing how it reacts to very, very strong bends. My glue is tacky to the touch just to while I like it, so let's go ahead and fold. So as you can see, it's resisted really well to folding. I sort of imagined it would crack, but it really hasn't. If you look very closely, you can see where the wax is sort of split open, but it's very even and it's not an ugly look by any means. And I'm sure that just a simple buff down will equalize this very quickly. So we'll go ahead and buff it down and see if indeed that does equalize those minute cracks, which I'm not even sure you actually see properly on camera, you can sort of see this a discoloration on the edge, but that's about it really. So let's go ahead and buff it quickly and see what happens. So this is very interesting and this is why this leather 
has such a cult following, it's because this top layer buffs off and comes off quite fast, revealing the colour underneath. And this is what creates or gives it the patina that uh, people have come to love and adore, and it's a patina that builds up very, very quickly. Uh, it does leave a bit of a white waxy residue on the cloth, which you can just about make out on camera, um, but overall it's fine. Just yeah, if you're wearing jeans, for example, it might leave a bit of waxy residue, but my guess is that would leave that would be easily remedied just by washing your jeans with some soapy water very quickly or something like that. But yeah, as you can see, just some very light strokes, very quick strokes, not necessarily light, but just a few quick strokes and already we're seeing the natural colour, well at least not the natural, but the original dark colour of the leather pop out from underneath. So that is very interesting and I'm very curious to see how that is going to age. For my next scratch test, now I've already tried this out with my nail and as you can see the top layer comes up really quickly but I'm using here uh, just my simple spatula and it's a relatively soft steel spatula with uh, a blunt edge and I'm just going to try and see if I can scratch up the surface here. Oh yeah, okay. So be careful when, <laughs> be very careful when working with this leather. It is going to scratch immensely fast. I'm going to try something else here. This cutting mat has seen better days. It's by no means uh, awful. It's it's quite decent. It's still in relatively good condition. And I wouldn't cons consider it to be re very abrasive. But we are going to try testing out this side of the leather, just rubbing it across here to see how that reacts. So I'm speaking at the same time so you get an idea of the length of time I'm spending rubbing. As you can see I'm pressing down quite hard and there is definitely a white waxy residue come off there and indeed the, the wax has come off in the areas where I've been pressing and you can also just about tell some minute little scratches. Let's get closer to the camera here. You can just about tell some minute little scratches on the surface of that leather. Um, yeah, very interesting result. As always, I'm using clear tokenol to burnish my edge as well as a 100% cotton glove. And this burnishes gorgeously, leaving a wonderfully contrasted edge here. And I'm really enjoying that look. The final test I want to perform is to see if I can just completely scratch off this surface and reveal what's underneath. So here goes. So clearly underneath it just looks like I'm exposing the top layer of leather here. Nothing surprising. Um, I was wondering if it might be, you know, subpar quality leather, but no, it looks, it looks like full grain top quality or top grain leather here, so I'm yeah confident this is good leather and uh, very pleased with the results and certainly the contrast does look quite spectacular. To get a proper feel about how this leather was working, I went ahead and made this little card holder. It's my four slot card holder, one, two, three, and four slots. It's a simple one piece wrapped card holder and the template is available to download for free off my blog. The link will be in the description down below. Overall my feelings here on this leather is that it's a very interesting leather to work with but not a forgiving leather by any means. Every single little scratch mark that will end up here, you know, will end up here. Um, so you have to be very careful. Even just storing this leather in the wrong way will end up scratching it. Um, so I would say this is not a leather for beginners, but this leather is certainly fun to work with and it should give you amazing results with wear. And I can't wait to see how this one is going to wear and tear and patina, as we say in the craft, uh, over the next few weeks and months and maybe even years. Now, just FYI, this is again 1.2 millimeters thick and it's, I would say, moderately supple. It's not the most strong or rigid leather I've used so far. So if you want something a bit more rigid, you may want to go up slightly in increments compared to what you're usually used to working with. Another thing to note is I found the burnishing, although it works well, for some reason I wasn't getting an amazing burnish from the off the hot top, you know, just straight from the start. And it could be because of the waxes present, they were getting in my burnish and just weren't giving me the, the result I was hoping for, or at least maybe it was just taking me a bit longer to get used to. 
As I said, this is a very surprising leather to work with, and certainly even throughout this testing, I've been surprised a couple of times at the way it was reacting to my different tests. And I... Would I recommend it? Well, yes, if you're looking for something special, if you're looking for something different that will surprise people and patina, definitely go for it. If you're beginning in leathercraft, this, again, may not be for you. The complications of handling this improperly are way too big and important and impossible to get rid of. I would say this is not a beginner's leather, um, simply because if you're starting out, the cost of this leather, it's not the cheapest, so you probably don't want to have a leather that's going to be too easily scratched as you're starting out. There you go, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, seeing the results, and hopefully this has inspired you to make your own or to test this leather out for yourself. Whatever the case may be, please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I always love to read you guys, and don't forget to leave me a comment letting me know what leather I should test out next. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully you've learned something. And hopefully I'll see you very soon for some more Leathercraft.